Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to be looking at the CSEC Chemistry June 2017 Paper 1 workout. Let's begin. A question 1 says, which of the following processes provide evidence of the particulate nature of matter? Now, based on what we know, the fusion, osmosis, Brownian motion are all processes that demonstrate that matter is made up of particles that are in a constant state of motion. We also know that filtration is a separation technique. So our answer would be diffusion and osmosis, which is one and three only. So that's B. Number two refers to the following table, which gives the melting and boiling points of the chlorides of four elements. Question asks, which of the elements forms a chloride that is ionic in nature? Also, based on what we know, ionic salts have high melting and boiling points. So, the answer would be 3, which is C. Number 3, which of the following elements has 7 electrons in its outer shell? Now, group 7 elements would have seven electrons in their outer shell you know that hydrogen oxygen nitrogen none of those are in group one chlorine is in group seven and has an electronic configuration of two eight seven so chlorine is our answer that's d number four an atom has 20 electrons when it ionizes it has the same electronic configuration as so for an atom with 20 electrons, the electronic configuration would be 2882 and therefore it would lose 2 electrons to, to become stable <coughs> and therefore its stable electronic configuration would become 288 and that's electronic configuration of argon. So our answer would be argon, that's B. Number five, which of the following elements does not form simple ions by gaining or losing electrons? So we have carbon, copper, calcium, and chlorine. Carbon is in group four. And so it would be very difficult for carbon to form um, by losing or gaining. So carbon shares electrons. So our answer would be A. Number six, some calcium carbonate was reacted with excess dilute hydrochloric acid. The volume of carbon dioxide evolved was recorded and plotted against time. Which of the following graphs represents the reaction? So during a reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid, we'd have carbon dioxide gas being produced and that gas would be produced fastest in the initial stages sorry, of the reaction and then the amount of gas will slowly decrease. So the total volume of gas would rise rapidly and then tapers off. So our answer would be A, it's the most appropriate graph. Number seven, which of the following represents a balanced equation for the reaction between aqueous silver nitrate and aqueous sodium chloride? So we have that in a chemical reaction, we know that matter is conserved so we should have an equal number of atoms on both sides of the equation and the option with the balance equation would be D. Number 8, which of the following acids will not form an acid salt? In order to form an acid salt, the acid must have more than one electron, one hydrogen atom, sorry, to donate. So when we look at all the acids, we see that 
only D has one electron to donate. All the others have, sorry, not electron, hydrogen ions. So D is our answer. That's ethanoic acid. Number nine, sodium reacts with water according to the equation. We have two sodium atoms reacting with two molecules of water to give two molecules of sodium hydroxide and one molecule of hydrogen gas. The number of liters of hydrogen at RTP liberated when 0.1 mole of sodium reacts with excess water is, so you have to calculate that. Alright, so you know that we can look at the mole ratio to find out how many um, moles of how many liters of hydrogen would be liberated. So the mole ratio between sodium and water, sodium and hydrogen gas, sorry, would be two to one. So what we have. We have 0 0.05 moles of hydrogen gas would be obtained when 0 0.1 mole of sodium reacts. And so if 24 liters are obtained for one mole, then 0 0.05 times 24 would be obtained for 0 0.05 moles, and that's 1.2 liters. So the answer is A. Number 10, which of the following oxides may show both acidic and basic properties? You know that amphotherism is the ability for a metallic compound to display both acidic and, met and basic properties. And aluminum oxide is the only answer there. The group 3 element. So the answer is D. Number 11, a mixture of copper 2 oxide and copper 2 sulfate is best separated by. Now, insoluble salts can be separated from soluble salts by mixing in excess water, followed by filtration. So, we know that copper 2 sulfate is soluble in water, but not copper 2 oxide. Therefore, C is our answer. Number 12, which of the following elements exhibits allotropy? So allotropy is the existence of a chemical element in different forms with distinct physical properties. And we know the best example of allotropy is carbon, which shows two forms, diamond and graphite. So carbon is our answer. Number 13, which of the following statements is true of an endothermic reaction? An endothermic process is any process which requires or absorbs energy from the surroundings. And so, in, a, in an endothermic reaction, heat is absorbed from the surroundings. That's B. Number 14, in which of the following substances will electrolysis not occur when an electrical current is passed through it? So, <laughs> an electrical current will not flow through solid sodium chloride so therefore the answer is C number 15 which of the following are physical properties of ionic substances now we know that ionic substances have high melting and boiling points and are good electrical conductors when molten. So one and three, that's B. 